I'm trying to figure out if we're going to keep going around the Rose Bowl or if we get the guys to come back and pick us up. It's getting kind of like huh? nasty. <laughs> and we don't need lights, really. So we, We're really close, so we can get to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you guys ought to get in the car. What's that? We can put your bikes on the roof and you can get in the car. Um, We can do that, too. You want to get in the car? I'll just meet up at the Rose Bowl. We'll go to the Rose Bowl. I mean, if we're close, let's just go. Yeah, okay, we'll see you guys right. at the Rose Bowl. We'll follow you then. Okay, cool. so much more inaccessible for all of us to kind of get to. But it's taken people from all over the country to kind of make this, this whole project come together. And that's one of the things I think that's made it so special is we've had these experiences. Some of our mission was is just to like seek out these amazing rides in places that you wouldn't necessarily expect them. We've seen some amazing stuff. I mean, that's why I signed up for this. Is I'm see things that I'll never have the chance to see. Make sure I'm in tune here. It's pretty cool and kind of, it's a unique traveling experience. kind of already know each other because I think we've all kind of been there. That's what makes it so easy to kind of come together even though we haven't sometimes ridden together. Um, 
it's just there's there's that common ground or common language, I guess, that we all have. After day two, I feel like I know most of these guys better than, you know, most people that you meet and know for two days. You know other little quirks or um, what they're going to do on the bike just, be, just from sitting behind them and watching them squirm around on a saddle for eight hours. <laughs> just pushing each other so that, you know, you get momentum from them. You know, you kind of keep moving in that sense. Look at that view, yeah, bro. It's unreal, man. Woo! In reality, it's like the bike is an amazing tool that takes you to places that you could never go, regardless of you know whether it's paved or paved or gravel or you know a field or you know you're doing it of your own power. Actually, the whole continental experience for me has been um, interesting in that you know it's sort of pushing the limits of what you can do on a, a road bike and you know kind of ex extending the definition of just a road bike is for paved roads. Gravel Road adds this level of engagement with riding that you miss when you're on the smooth pavement. Because you gotta stay concentrated. The road surface is always changing. I guess because maybe you can feel the ground more and you're always aware of what's going on. You just don't have to blank out on blank pavement. You always want to do something that is is a throwback to the how they did it a hundred years ago. And I think that appeals to the romantic side of people. It's the beauty of gravel, it's like your own line. Endless gravel just felt it was just such an adventure. I often find that in places where people are surprised to see you, their first question is, how did you get up here? Or how did you get here? From there, they're usually, you know, you tell them your story and they're usually interested in it. Like, why is this person on a road bike in the middle of nowhere on a gravel road? It's a lot more interesting than why are you in the car?
everything hurts. It never gets easier, regardless of how fast you are. It's very easy, at least on my side, to like kind of slow down and get complacent and you know want to drag feet. And it's also fun to kind of push yourself a little bit, you know, and to feel a little bit of the, you know, that hurt. If you love something a lot, any activity or person or project, uh, it makes sense to kind of feel out your boundaries and limits with it. I love the complete honesty in the fact that there's, you can't argue where you're out of it, you can't make, there's nothing you can do. Tomorrow we got a 90 mile day of a 20 mile climb and I like the, uh, the dogness of it. I will suffer like a dog, but um, I couldn't be looking forward to almost anything more. Riding, especially the climbing, is a super emotional scenario to be in. It's like you're confronting yourself. I always knew that cycling wasn't wasn't just the act of riding a bike. It was always uh, far more emotional, far more ethereal practice than just pedaling. And I think when you're suffering, you kind of are allowed to open up different venues of your brain and your body. and. And I think you're able to perceive things that you wouldn't with just kind of like a normal, just everyday kind of body uh, experience. Yeah, I mean, you get kind of close to, I guess, heavenly things. But, I mean, that's the closest I guess I get to religion. I feel like I'm my purest sense of myself when I'm riding. If I feel good enough and everything's working and, and you get to this point where it's almost Everything's kind of clear, it's kind of silent. That's like the holy grail. I don't know, it's euphoric. <laughs> 